County now on 1, Operator 52, where is your emergency? We just witnessed a uh, car run under a semi. Oh, God. Okay, did okay, somebody uh, else just hit them? Uh, no, but they just had to um, break really, really hard. I was out walking my dog right there. I saw his lights right after he hit, and I heard the screech and got into the impact. Okay. No, that door's not going nowhere. We got the fire department, so they're going to have to pry this. They're going to have to pry it open, okay? Hey, what you can do is just keep talking to us, okay? The Evans Network of Companies is a big conglomerate of trucking companies based out of Pennsylvania. And they have one particular division called the Evans Delivery Company. And they had a trucker who lived off a five-lane highway in Middle Georgia. Evans Delivery Company didn't give this man a place to park. So every night or whenever he got back from some long trip, he would park his truck and sometimes his truck and his trailer at his house right off the side of this five-lane highway. The way that he did it was the problem. And one night, our client, Mr. Otto James, was coming back from Waffle House. He was an 83-year-old man. He drove an old Toyota pickup truck. Didn't have but one eye. Licensed driver, and it was, it was the wrong time, the wrong place, because that tractor trailer had all the lanes blocked, and he hit it. The truck driver and some bystanders called 911. Police eventually arrived, and you could see Mr. James in his truck, trying to wiggle, trying to get free, disoriented. He didn't really know what had happened, but his face was smashed against the windshield, blood dripping down the glass. It's a hard thing to see. So he was in, the, in and out of the hospital for the next several months. This was a guy who was older in life, but had been doing well. A very active guy, in shape. He mowed his own lawn, cleared stumps out of his yard when he needed to. But he was never the same after this collision. It just got worse. He didn't want to stop, though. He would get up. He didn't want to go to a nursing home. So as long as he could use his legs, I just uh, help him around, and I stayed with him. I didn't leave him the whole time. I just stayed right with him. So we initially uh, contacted what's called a life care planner, and that's another type of expert that can look at someone who's been severely injured in an accident and determine what medical needs they're going to need in the future. Someone who can put together things like the medical equipment he'll need, the skilled nursing care he'll need, the changes to the house that'll have to be made to accommodate what he can and can't do. It's not just the harm you cause, the, the past pain and suffering, it's the future medical bills and the future pain and suffering that are compensable. He had to have a, a feeding tube placed. Um, he had to have a permanent catheter installed. I mean, it, it, it got real bad and 10 months later he died. All I can say is, um, he was a pistol of a man. He was always smiling. I always had a smile, always dancing. He had come through dancing every day. I mean, he loved to dance and uh, he Boy. loved to work. Just such a great man. So, um, you know, yeah, we clients can become, become like family sometimes. And I think this is one of those cases where they did. Everybody loved him. Everybody loved daddy. Mr. James passed away, and that changed the case drastically. It went from just a straight uh, personal injury trucking case to a wrongful death case. And make sure that we then got Mr. James's daughter the compensation that she deserved for the death of her father. But he died 10 months after the collision, so we knew the trucking company and the insurance company were gonna argue that he died for independent reasons, so it had nothing to do with the collision done enough of these cases to know that they'll grasp at any straw, and they would definitely grasp at that one. So we had to find a medical expert, someone with a, a, a medical doctorate who could explain what happened and why. Explain the real obvious truth that the collision started a downhill descent that ended in his death. When you take on a trucking case, you've got a real adversary because there's more money at stake. I mean, there's 
Usually a collision is more severe and almost always the insurance policy you're dealing with is larger so people fight harder to keep their money. That's what insurance companies do. As the plaintiff, when we represent someone who's been hurt, we bear the burden of proof. We can't just go into court and say something. We can't just ask the jury to assume something. We've got to provide proof for every single thing we say. Was this backing allowed? Was this stopping allowed? Uh, how should he have backed? How should he have stopped? How should he have parked? Policies bear on all of those questions. Well, we hired an accident reconstructionist, someone who can go out and look at the crush patterns on vehicles, do downloads of black boxes, uh, look at skid marks and other marks on the highway, and figure out what happened to cause the collision. Our uh, accident reconstruction expert was able to use uh, 3D modeling technology to essentially take a 360 degree scan of the, the vehicles to create a illustration, a demonstrative exhibit, if you will. Um, so a jury who's unfamiliar with this wreck can look at that and, and really just engage and be able to visualize what happened at the time of this uh, collision. We retained a conspicuity expert, someone who talks about how conspicuous this would have been who confirmed that the visual picture with which Mr. James had been presented was not one that should have caused him to stop. In other words, he did slam on the brakes not soon enough, but that wasn't his fault. He did what a reasonable driver would have done. The accident reconstruction expert evaluated this collision and the uh, headlight testing data and was able to conclude that it was not likely under these circumstances that our client would have been able to stop in time to avoid uh, hitting the tractor trailer. Can you tell me what happened? Well, I found a parked truck here every night at home. Now we knew a little bit about this truck company, the Evans Network of Companies. And we knew this was not a company that prioritized safety. So we got to wondering, even after this collision, even after our client had been airlifted from the road in front of the truck driver, even after the police officer had cited or given the ticket to the truck driver for illegal backing. And we weren't sure that they were gonna stop doing this. So we started watching. And sure enough, for months and months after this collision, the trucker kept doing it. He kept backing his truck and his trailer across the highway. And we would know that because you could drive by his house and see it. We got a video. One of the family members happened to come by while he was doing it and stopped the car, took a video with a smartphone that showed the truck backing across the highway. Our law firm sent a letter to the defense that said, you're still doing this. Quit. It puts people in danger. The trucking company essentially just buried its head in the sand about what was going on. And, and that, was, that was negligent in and of itself. It was a striking moment for, for me as a lawyer because who's in charge over there? I mean, who runs the company? You know, the people who think about safety and try to keep their drivers from putting the public at risk ought to be the drivers themselves or at least the company, not some plaintiff's lawyer like me. But that's the truth about what happened is we sent them a letter and it was that that made them stop. It took, <laughs> it took the injuries to our client, it took the ticket, it took us suing him, it took a letter from us, even while the lawsuit was going on, to the trucking company to say, stop doing this, but they finally quit. They finally gave the guy, the trucker, a place to park where he wouldn't have to back across a five lane highway. So that's a, that's a good feeling for us and for our client. We took our surveillance photos and our video all the photos and all the video that showed that this truck driver and this truck company kept backing across the five lane highway even after this collision, even after they'd been sighted. And we made it into exhibits. We got ready to use them in cross-examination. They were exhibits 20 through 29. And we held them back and waited until the cross-examination of the trucking company's safety director. Now it turns out that the trucking company's safety director was a lawyer. He'd spent about two, three years practicing for a law firm and then joined the trucking company. Now, the, quote, safety director had never driven a truck, never worked as a truck driver, but within two years of joining the truck company, he had been promoted to safety director and reported directly to the CEO, who was his father. Correct. We cross-examined the safety director of the company and showed him these pictures, one after the other. 
Despite that, the safety director and the company still took the position that they'd done nothing wrong. So at the end of the deposition, I asked him, I said, what would you say tomorrow if another one of your drivers walked up to you and said, I've got a great idea. I need a new place to park my truck, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to back my truck and trailer across a five-lane highway so I can park next to my house. And he sat there and he thought, and he said, I would advise him that I would prefer he made a different decision. And I knew then that we had. The reason this case resolved by settlement instead of by a jury trial is, in short, because they knew we were going to win. And the way we got there is to gather all the evidence that we need, get presented in court to the judge so that we would then later be able to present it at trial. And then once that was clear, once it was clear to the defense and clear to the insurance company that we were ready, locked and loaded, we sent them a demand, a policy limits demand. And we said within some period of days, I think it was 30 days, we said, you need to pay your entire policy limits. And they said yes, because we had them beat. We knew that there were a lot of facts we had to deal with in this case. And we knew that we were up against a formidable opponent. Um, so in this case, it was important to, to hire uh, a number of expert witnesses. And ultimately, we were successful in part because of the work of our expert witnesses and resolving this case for the full insurance policy limits of $2 million. No insurance company and no trucking company settles a case out of the goodness of their heart. They don't settle because they think it's right. They don't settle because they have sympathy for the family who's lost a loved one. They settle because they think if they don't, they're gonna be in trouble. In this case, it was no exception. In Georgia, in a wrongful death case, you're allowed to recover the full value of the decedent's life. Um, and that, you know, is, is kind of just a, a phrase. What is the full value of a decedent's life? Um, so we went and we talked to uh, Mr. James's friends and family. While he was 83 years old, we were able to develop evidence that showed that he was a pretty spry 83-year-old. There's other value to life, not just work. And we were able to develop that evidence to show that, that, that Mr. James's value is not just a, a tangible dollar amount, it's how he made his friends and family feel. It's all the other things um, that he was able to do. I remember about halfway through the case, I was talking to his daughter and she said, I just wanna, I just wanna buy him a, a Caterpillar digger so he doesn't drive on the road anymore, but he can go outside and he can dig and drive around and he can have fun. I mean, just, just simple things. Wanted to buy a big machine so he could move dirt in his backyard and have fun. It was a little sad because Mr. James uh, isn't alive to be able to live comfortably, you know, and, and enjoy what he's owed. I didn't get out at all for a year with Daddy, but uh, I had Mama before that, and I just hadn't got out much in 10 years, you know, and so... I just kind of was so thankful that both Jeb and Morgan come to me. Without y'all and them, I could have never made it. Because I'm disabled myself, but I could have never made it for real. Y'all, I mean, from the bottom of my heart, I thank y'all.